Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is the second video, a part of our Adopt-A-Farm series. So if you're totally new to this, check out the link in the description box below and I will have the link for you to sign up and get this video sent to you along with the activity pages. So in today's video, I wanted to take you guys around the farm and show you the different fencings that we use for um, our animals. So pig fencing versus cow fencing versus sheep fencing. It'll be a whole thing. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, show you guys um, how we rotate our animals around the farm, um, how they graze, uh, meaning how they eat grass, and then also explain what a ruminant is, which is what our sheep and cattle are, um, how the grass goes into their stomachs and they actually chew it twice. Isn't that kind of weird? So that's all in today's video, but let's get going. We have a lot to cover. Okay, so the first thing here, we are in our garage, and I want to show you guys this thing back here that is clicking. This is actually our fence charger. <laughs> Look at that nice bowl on there. <laughs> so we use this to electrify all the fence around our farm. So if you've ever gone to a farm and they have this nice little wire and you touch it and it kind of like bites you is how I explain it to my son William, um, or it shocks you, that's how our fences are here. Um, there's different types of fencings um, that we use on our farm or that we have on our farm. Barbed wire is probably the most um, common that you guys have seen. I'll leave a little video here of what barbed wire looks like. What we use on our farm is high tensile um, electric fencing. So it is electrified and it keeps all of our animals in. And then we also use a poly braid wire, which can be electrified. And we use that for more of a temporary setup. So when we're um, setting up paddocks, like tim uh, small um, spots for the animals to graze, like for one day, um, we'll use uh, this poly braid. <laughs> so as you guys can imagine, hi, honey. Hi. we have to use different size fencing for different animals. So if you think of a pig, they're gonna be way down here. A sheep, maybe a little bit higher. And then a cow, I mean, their back is like up to here on me. So I'm out here with the pigs so I can show you their fencing. And they're like, you guys remember? They're like, where's the food, lady? Look, where's the food? Here's our pig fencing. So you can see one, two, three, four. We have five different strands of um, <laughs> high tensile wire. Hi guys. So the pigs is obviously going to be closer to the ground because that's where pigs go or they like to be way down on the ground. Um, and then we, Ryan just built this like Fort Knox so it's five high. Normally when we do the pig fencing we just do it about up to here like this third wire. So um, I don't know they, where their, their eyesight is they don't go up too high. Huh? Yeah, you guys are stinky, aren't you? So we're coming over here with the sheep. They're all bedded down in the shade. But I just wanted to show you guys how Lola wants to say hi. Hello, Lola. You can see way back here, they have their fencing. And same kind of thing as the um, pigs. We want it a little bit low because pigs and sheep both want to go under something if they could like escape. Um, and then you want it about at their eyesight. So for this paddock that we have the sheep in, it's just kind of a temporary thing for them. We have it set up for cattle normally. So like I was talking, there's different types of fencing. So here's actually all three. This is our old, old fencing that like Ryan's grandpa put in. So this is going to be your barbed wire. And that doesn't really hold cattle in very well. It doesn't hold sheep in or pigs in at all. This is our high tensile, this wire right here. And um, that's electrified, so I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> and then, so this is set up for cattle. So see how it's higher? And then these are set up for sheep. And see, these are our poly braids. So this is electrified as well. This, you see the black and the gray there. But that's definitely lower than the cattle um, fence. So, because the sheep are obviously shorter. So we're gonna let the sheep graze in here for a little bit longer. They all went back into the shade because it's nice and hot today. But we'll let the sheep graze in here a little bit longer 
and then we'll be able to pick up that poly braid um, and move it to the next paddock for them. But uh, we need to set this up for sheep eventually and put another um, high tensile wire in that's um, lower, but we just haven't got to that yet. It's a big project, especially with all this brush that we have to go through. It's a lot of hard work. So since they won't be here for very long, we just did a temporary wire. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to explain was when we say paddock, what does that mean? <laughs> like, I don't know what that means, Kelsey. You just keep using these terms. Um, a paddock is an area of grass that we give our cattle or our sheep or even our pigs and um, we contain them on that area. So I'm gonna flip this around and show you what Ryan's doing. So the cows are up getting water right now, but you can see this fence. There's a blue post, a yellow or a white post, a blue post, a white post um, runs down here. The cows have been on this part, so you can see it's trampled down, and they've been eating grass there, and they haven't been to this part. And you can see that it's a lot taller, um, the grass is standing higher. So what Ryan does is he sets up that poly braid fence, that temporary fencing. Um, to an area like a big square kind of and lets the cows on there um, for a certain period of time until they've eaten it down. So sometimes that period of time might be a day, it might be a few hours, it just depends on how big of an area it is that he gave them and what his intention is on when he's going to come back and move them. So obviously if we gave them a small patch we're not going to uh, leave them there all day. We're gonna um, come back and move them multiple times. That way they have plenty of um, grass to fill their stomachs. That way they're not hungry. So I will insert a video right here um, of Ryan moving the cows to a new paddock. So you can see how eager they are to get around him, get through that fence so then they can start eating the new fresh grass. Okay, so I am back up at the house, but I just wanted to explain really quick what a ruminant is because that is what our sheep and our cows are and I wanted to explain why it's so important for them to have fresh grass and for us to move them to different paddocks. And I just want to say I love this series that we're doing with Adopt a Farm because I, I know what a ruminant is. I know that they eat grass, they thrive on grass, but like I had to look it up for our activity pages and I had to look up the actual terminology and I got to learn about it as well, which was really cool. So what a ruminant is, is um, the cow or the sheep, I mean goats too, um, I don't remember all the animals that are listed with it, but they ingest the grass and um, if you didn't know, cows have a three-part stomach, which is very complex. But I, uh, if you look at the activity pages, if you haven't already signed up for them, look in the link in the description box below. But on the activity page, I have a printout of what um, their stomach actually looks like for a cow. And I mean, it's the same thing for any ruminant. Um, uh, and like an explanation of how it all works if I don't explain it <laughs> perfectly. But um, they uh, eat the grass and it goes into the first chamber of their stomach. And then they actually kind of like regurgitate it. So it comes back up into their mouth and they do this thing called chewing the cud is what it's called, but that comes back up and they chew it again. So a lot of the times we'll move the cows into a paddock, they'll start eating the grass and then they'll kind of get full and they'll start laying down and um, you'll see them chewing when they're laying down. And that's when they're chewing the cud. And then it goes back down into their stomach and um, will eventually go through their digestive tract. Uh, but I just thought it was really cool that I got to learn about that as well, like the actual science of it, instead of just saying, oh yeah, they eat grass, they chew their cud, and <laughs> you know, that's that. So I hope that wasn't too complex for you guys. If it was, then just know that uh, um, cows and sheep have a very complex, interesting, crazy stomach. And um, I'm glad mine is a little bit more simple. <laughs> okay guys, sorry, I had to come inside and get my computer that way I could um, look at these emails. 
So I wanted to say hi to Mrs. Douglas's third grade class um, from Goddard. It's so good to have you guys. I'm so excited that you're here and learning about everything that we have on the farm. Hopefully you guys can come out someday since you're not too far away. And then I wanted to answer some questions from Mrs. Moore's class. So they sent us a list of questions, so I'll try to go through them quick. Spencer wants to know how far your farm is from Nortonville. Um, it's probably three and a half hours away, so a long ways away. <laughs> Riker wants to say he really liked the video and um, wants to know if he can feed your pigs. Riker, you can come down anytime and feed the pigs. It's just a long ways away. Abe says she would like to bring, uh, would like me to bring the farm to the classroom. Maybe someday I can bring. I don't know, maybe a video or something up to see you guys. I'll be coming up there soon um, for a visit. Sadie wants to know if you are going to get a horse on the farm. Soon, Sadie. Well, is soon like within five years? That's that's a future plan, but um, not right now with the with our little kids. Emery wants to know if you could bring, um, if I could bring animals to the classroom. Not right now. Sorry, honey. Ava wants to know if our class can go inside your house and see if it looks like a farmhouse. Maybe we'll do a farm tour of the house and everything around. Our house is, you know, we have two little kids, so it's always messy. Miles wants to know if you can ride the, the pigs. I would not try to ride the pigs. It would, it would be entertaining, but they would probably get pretty mad at me. And Tucker wants to know if we could feed the cows. Um, Tucker, you can come out and feed the cows whenever. Like I said, it's a long ways away, but maybe we'll do a fun video with my husband Ryan and um, he can show you guys more in-depth videos on the cows and um, yeah, some close-ups because they're, they're fun animals to be around. We'll definitely do a video coming up on that. But anyways, thank you guys for the emails. You can, I'll leave a link, um, not even a link, my email in the description box below. And you guys can email us with more questions or um, just to say hi. I really appreciate it. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't already, give it a like and subscribe to our channel because it really helps it out. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.